This is turning into a problem. A couple of more jumps and someone is going to be in real trouble. Plus, something is wrong with the storm. And I'm going to show you what as we dive right into our tropical update and take a look at the very latest data to try and predict the future of tropical storm Aaron. Friends, when you look at this image, do you see anything that looks weird or wrong to you? Well, check this out. This is, of course, Tropical Storm Aaron. Look at this nice circulation. Boy, you can just really see it here. The clouds are fanning out in all directions. You see the circulation. Kind of looks like almost like an eye, but it's not really. But uh, something's missing. What is it? Well, deep convection, folks. You need deep convection wrapping around a storm to develop the storm. And so we're not seeing that. It's not really shear that's a problem. Something's a problem, though. But look, you see a little bit of shear out here on the east, but that's not really the problem. So what is the problem? Well, I'm going to show you here in just a second. We're going to take a look at a map. I'll show you exactly what's going on with it. Here is the basin wide view. By the way, my name is Jason. I really appreciate you being here, folks, and I've been tracking these systems for over 40 years and uh, certainly have some interesting experience with tropical weather. And I wonder if you do, too, if you've been through a tropical storm or if there's been an area of interest that uh, uh, a storm that's particularly piqued your interest, like maybe Katrina or Rita or Wilmer, some of those that I remember. Uh, Fran, I went through Fran. Let me know down in the comments section what you've seen. I'd also be curious if you've, uh, what is the maximum uh, category of hurricane that you would actually stay put for versus leave? I would probably not stay put for anything more than a category two storm. Anyway, there's a hurricane or soon to be hurricane Aaron, tropical storm Aaron out here. You can see that very, very, very well. There is another wave moving off the coast of Africa. If you could actually see back to the east, you would see lots of tropical waves that are set to move off over the next 10 days. So we're gonna have a lot to watch, folks. There's a wave moving through the Caribbean, a little piece of energy in the Gulf that's gonna move inland into Mississippi and Alabama, Louisiana, bring some rain there. Piece of energy moving off the coast of North Carolina, a lot of convection with this along a frontal boundary. That could play a role in what happens with the track of Aaron as we go out in time. And a circulation here, and a circulation there, and a circulation here, a circulation everywhere folks up here in the North Atlantic but none of those are going to bother anybody so we're going to ignore them for now but lots to watch out here taking a look at the National Hurricane Center's tracking tropical storm air and 45 miles per hour max sustained winds are racing to the west at 22 miles per hour there's that disturbance in the North Atlantic 10% chance of development we don't care about that it's gone and this one will move in with no chance of development before it does so there's your cone of uncertainty in your track looking to be a hurricane by midweek and then all indications are we're going to be dealing with a major hurricane somewhere north of the Antilles or the Dominican Republic as we get on out toward the weekend, the end of the weekend. And as you can see, the cone widens. It's hard to predict tropical systems three days out, much less five, seven, eight days out, which is when we'll be talking about it potentially impacting us way over here. One of the things that is going on with the storm now that's keeping it from developing rapidly is cooler ocean temperatures back here where it is in the green. You see those? Okay, that's not all that conducive for big time development, but look what happens as the storm makes its way over into the Western Atlantic. This is what I call the power zone, folks. That's a trademark. Cold rain trademark. If you're anybody else using that, you let me know right away, all right? But a uh, couple of things going on here. We've got temperatures in the mid 80s. This is in Celsius, 29 degrees is about 85 Celsius. 29 degrees Celsius is about 85 Fahrenheit. And it gets warmer than that when you get to 30 and 31, 32, you're looking at close to 90 degrees. And so we've got bath water, rocket fuel over here. Upper level support looks good too. Wind shear is low or will be lowering with time as this thing moves in and dry air is going to be abating in this area too. So all of these things converging together so that anything that moves in here that has a circulation like Aaron will have will power up quickly. That's why I call it the power zone. This is a little bit of a concerning trend. We're seeing the last five runs of the European model and look what's happening. It's bringing this thing a little bit farther south. I told you the other day when we were talking about another system that we were looking at, anything kind of in this area here has a tough time hitting the United States. It, climatologically speaking, they, most of those systems eventually miss to the east, but a few of them have hit. But this one is, if it gets a little bit farther down here into the Caribbean and uh, well near these islands in the DR and the Bahamas, this is a much more concerning track potential. And that potential is on the table. It's certainly not off the table. I still favor the out to sea scenario, but some of the trends lately 
make me believe that we might be a little closer uh, for uh, comfort than we would like to be. So we're going to take a look and see what's causing all of this. The other issue that we see uh, with the storm right now is it's battling dry air. That's the other big thing. You see all this dry air up here. When you don't see a lot of convection around a beautiful circulation, you usually have a couple problems. And one of those is dry air. But as we go on out in time, this is the European model. Check this out. The thing moves across, gets in here to Thursday, Friday, really starts to keep that moisture envelope intact and kick that dry air out of the circulation. And look, starts to really take off as it gets north of the islands and look what happens we get on out here into sunday and monday and tuesday we've got an actual hurricane here that is 933 millibars that's an upper end uh, major hurricane and so this thing is tracking awfully close eventually see the dry air is kicked out and it's got a very nice moisture envelope and it moves up just to the east of Hatteras so it still misses but it's much much closer than the last run that had it way out of Bermuda so a lot of stuff to watch that's going on We've got a big ridge that is building in, and there's Aaron right here. This is current. Um, this is the upper level steering, and watch what happens. We get these ridges. We're going out in time a little bit. When you have ridges, folks, the air circulates around ridges in a clockwise fashion, and it keeps tropical storms moving west, and it keeps them on a southerly trajectory or westerly. It keeps them south, is what I'm trying to say. And so watch this as we get on out toward Friday. Got a nice big ridge here keeping this thing south. The European has really built this thing in. If it holds it together, this thing could stay south. There's that frontal boundary along with that little system moving off of North Carolina I told you about before that's going to create a little bit of a weakness in this. And as that happens, it's going to provide a little bit of a mechanism for Aaron to come north a bit. There's Aaron down there. It's hard to keep up with it on the upper level satellite or the satellite, the upper level height map, but uh, I'll keep you posted on where it is. Then that ridge builds in again and helps it to stay south. But look what's going on up here. Let me, let me roll this back a little bit. High heights here in the Northeast. If that were to stay the case, we're probably going to see this thing track into the United States. But watch what happens. This trough zooms out of Southeast Canada toward the Northern Atlantic. It helps to beat this ridge back and you have an escape route now for this thing to turn north into. This is what we've been seeing, but any delay in this trough coming down here, farther south this thing maybe gets, we could have a totally different ball game on our hand. It's not set in stone. There's no way to know, no reason to panic yet, but I still favor the escape route scenario. And there it goes, but it passes awful close to Hatteras this time, another jump or two, and we're inland here in the United States, another jump or two in the opposite direction, Bermuda could be in place. So we've got a lot to watch. Here are the hurricane models. Some of these models are pretty good. Some of them aren't so good. Let me find the right display. There it is. Uh, but uh, anyway, all of these hurricane models, once, her once a tropical cyclone is initiated, the hurricane models get initiated. There they are. They're all taking it north and eventually recurving it. So that is good. But uh, those things change all the time. The other thing I wanted to show you here is the European Ensemble. Very good model. And you can see all of these members have a, a cyclone here. That's um, you know being shown here with all the L's that you see. And they get strong, too. And they all track either north into or pretty far north of uh, the islands. And as we go on in a time, you see that big fan out, everything kind of sprayed out, but most all of them still recurve, okay? A couple of them go into the United States, but most everything's still recurving. So that's good news, gives us good confidence, but that could change. We're still eight days out. And as I said, I've been tracking these systems over four decades, and I know for sure that you can't ever say anything for sure when it comes to tropical cyclones beyond three days and even then, it's a stretch. So we're going to watch it. A lot of things at play here. I'll keep you posted on it. Right now, we've got your weather IQ question coming up. Beyond that, we're going to take a look at the weather over the next couple of days in the United States. Wrap up with space weather and geological updates. Stay tuned. All right. Get yourself ready. We've got a big weather IQ question coming at you. Here it is. What weather phenomenon causes the most annual fatalities in the United States? Tornadoes? floods, heat waves, or hurricanes? If you know the answer, type it in the comment section. If you don't know it, just wait to the end of the show. I'll let you know exactly what it is and why. In the meantime, we've got to get to the weather across the United States because there's a little bit of weather that's out there. Fortunately, not anything all that bad, but still got to take a look at it. 
All right, folks, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. We cover weather every day. We take a look at all of it. This is Cold Rain's Weather World, and we've got all the weather. Give the video a like if you haven't done so, and uh, leave a comment in the comment section. Always let me know where you're commenting from. Love to hear from you. If there's anything I can pray over for you specifically about, please put it in the comment section. I pray over you all generically every day. Please continue to pray for me and my family. We've got some health issues kind of going on with some family members, and I appreciate any prayers that you would offer up for me there. Uh, but folks, we've got problems of our own here in the northern uh, tier of the United States, here in the Midwest, Great Lakes. Smoke again coming in from Canada as the wildfires rage up there. Weather systems come along across the north and behind those they bring in the smoke and high pressure builds in and just traps it in the United States, sometimes kicks it to the northeast and the new weather system comes in, kicks everything out and we wash, rinse and repeat. Heat advisories up here in Maine going to be hot and muggy up there along the Mississippi Valley too down here between Louisiana and Alabama. That's not Alabama, that's Mississippi, of course. And uh, then we've got um, interior sections of the Northwest and the Intermountain West all the way up and down into the desert Southwest. It's going to be very hot, extreme heat warnings for the next couple of days and heat advisories up as well, even some red flag warnings where it's been dry and hot, don't burn. There is the Canadian wildfire map, folks. I didn't have this zoomed in, but there we go. We'll just zoom it in on the fly. They're burning. The air is coming in from the northwest, and it will just continue to do so and plague you guys again for the foreseeable future, the next several days. Uh, no relief certainly in sight over the next 48 hours, unfortunately. So we've got to deal with that. Cold front coming in eventually behind this front. That's where you're going to get that high pressure working out of the north, bringing in more and more of that smoke. Eventually, you'll get another system moving in to kick it out, but uh, not right now. Thunderstorms across much of the east, except for the northeast, and potential uh, heavier rains this morning. We've seen some of that down in Oklahoma and Texas. The flood watch has expired there, dry out west. Uh, later on this afternoon, we're going to see things fire up. We've got some rain around this morning, but that's going to die out for the for the most part. But then things fire right back up. Look at this. Corn Belt to the south, back to the west, and over to the east. Scattered showers and thunderstorms. No big, big areas of major rain today, but we could see a few severe reports. Hail and wind up here in Wisconsin, maybe up in the eastern UP of Michigan. We roll this along through the evening hours and things dissipate. Uh, for the most part, we still see some energy here in the, in the east along the uh, Cumberland Plateau up here into the southern Appalachians, holding some showers together through the night. Can't even mow the grass here. It's just raining every single day. And uh, here we go into tomorrow morning, uh, northeast getting in on the action, some showers, some thunderstorms starting to pop up as we get into the afternoon, mid-afternoon hours. And uh, same again back here in the Four Corners region, back into the Intermountain West and up into Montana. You guys could use some rain back here in Nevada and Utah and Colorado, Wyoming, up in uh, uh, Montana. But look at this, South Dakota and into Nebraska, get a little MCS moving through. Hopefully not too bad. Could see a few severe reports out of this, but it looks like there's capping that's going to be at play. And so we're not going to see all that much out of that uh, in terms of a big widespread event at least. And of course, more scattered showers and thunderstorms up and down the eastern seaboard tomorrow and things will die out tomorrow night. There's our high temperature map, folks, for this afternoon. 90s up here in Maine. Well, yikes, that's going to be hot. 90s stretching back through the Ohio Valley to South Texas where we find 100 degree temperatures. And then, of course, in the desert southwest, we're back up into the mid-one-teens again, working into the hundreds up to the inner mountain west and into the interior sections of the northwest. Very, very pleasant up here, but smoky in the northern tier, hot and humid up in Florida as we go through the next couple of days. Much the same warming up here in the plains, maybe backing off a little bit in the interior northwest. Still hot in the desert southwest. 90s across Texas to get to South Texas. 80s here in my area, 90s in Florida with thunderstorms and 80s and 90s up and down the East Coast, but we're still feeling pretty nice here where it's been cloudy and rainy. And uh, we'll go out one more day here and take a look and much the same story except cooling off in the Great Lakes in the Northeast, also the interior Northwest and the Northern Tier. Heat surging back into the plains where we find hundreds back up into the Central Plains and of course warm in the desert Southwest yet again. That's what's going on there. We take a look at the energy map over the next couple of days. It kind of gives us a look at the flow. Look at this little piece of energy. They're just coming in over the southeast around this ridge. We've got a ridge center here bringing air out of the southeast. You can see these little pieces of energy kind of moving up in this direction. We're going to keep us cloudy and unsettled down here. Another trough working through the Midwest. 
in the Great Lakes and uh, extending back into the Missouri Valley and down into the lower Mississippi Valley, keeping things unsettled in the southeast. Eventually, as we get on out toward Friday, Big Ridge takes over in the center of the country. Energy atop that ridge is going to keep you unsettled up here across the north from day to day. You might see showers and thunderstorms move through and eventually puts an end to the rain, this big ridge building in uh, into the southeast. Looking way out at the long range, six to ten days core of the heats out west and across the southern tier not too bad in the northeast along the west coast eventually as we get way on out from august 21st to the 17th alaska mixed signal there hawaii above normal and then of course temperature and rainfall patterns kind of correlate so where it's really really hot we're not seeing a lot in the way of thunderstorm and shower activity certainly not here in the four corners well just west of the four corners region over here in the inner mountain west but above across the northern tier where it's been like that and then above across the center portion of the country near normal everywhere else and so that's what we're looking at as we go on out through the week and wrap things up with the space weather and geological update coming right up all right here comes another coronal hole look at this you can see the black uh, area here in the sun that's coronal hole Enhance the solar wind. We know that if you watch this channel, you know that's what's going to happen. The solar wind will be enhanced and we could find ourselves back in minor geomagnetic storm conditions as it interacts with the magnetosphere. Sunspots, we've got a few of those coming toward us. Nothing all that complex or growing rapidly so we don't really have to worry about a big solar flare or CME unless a filament erupts and that's always a possibility but nothing imminent on that front. Look at the earthquake map. Woo! We in good shape, nothing going on at all over here. Everything's quiet, nothing going on on the volcano front and the ring of fire that we're watching, but there is something going on with the moon. It's going down, 87.3% waning gibbous, going to new moon phase on August 23rd. You still got another day or so to catch the Perseids at their peak. If you can get out there and you don't have smoke, you don't have clouds, rain, you don't have light pollution from the moon, get out there at the right time, you see some of those fireballs. And of course the countdown to fall is on 41 days until September the 22nd, which is calendar fall. I cannot wait, I cannot wait, I cannot wait. And that brings us all the way back around to today's weather IQ question. If you remember the question, it wasn't that long ago this time, this is a short show. What weather phenomenon causes the most annual fatalities in the US? Tornadoes, floods, heat waves, hurricanes? And the answer is heat waves. Heat waves cause 1,200 deaths annually each year. So you have to take care of yourself in a heat wave. Stay cool, drink plenty of fluids, take breaks, and stay, of course, hydrated, as I said. Now you know about heat waves and the weather, and of course, one more thing, I don't know why we're on a baseball kick lately, but I thought this was interesting. In 1994, there was a strike in Major League Baseball, and it lasted 232 days, and it resulted in the cancellation of the World Series that year. This is the first time that it happened in 90 years. How about that? Well, now you know about baseball, and of course, as always... This is Cold Rain reminding you, other channels run 24-7, but I got you covered right here, right now, 4814. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll track those tropics, and if anything happens or changes, I'll let you know on X. You can follow me at Real Cold Rain. I'm going to tweet a couple times a day, but uh, and some, unless something changes. But that's it for the day. Hope you have a great day. I'll see you back tomorrow. Take care.